Welcome back to the channel. On this video, I'll be talking about reality creation, the hyper sigil, a bit of magic stuff, all inspired by a very astute comment that was left on my previous video about these matters when I was talking about Neville Goddard. I first heard the term hyper sigil in the Disinfocon lecture given by the master majors and comic book writer Grant Morrison. So what is a hyper sigil first of all? Well, it's a sigil, but it's been made hyper. So sigils, as I understand them, come to us from uh, the work of Austin Osman Spare. I mean, the idea of sympathetic magic goes back into the, the cavemen times, but Austin Spare was the one that popularized, created the sigil technique that went on to become one of the cornerstones of chaos magic. So a sigil is a glyph that represents a desire. There's something that you want to have happen in the world something that you wish to occur, something that you wish to experience, something that you wish to have. So what you do is to get past your own psychic sensor, to get past the part of your brain that says, that's never going to happen for you. What you do is that you write down said desire and uh, knock out the repeating letters, knock out the vowels, take what's left, form a glyph out of that, refine the glyph until it's something you can easily visualize, then achieve a state of gnosis, a state of no mind. Uh, a state of complete relaxation and blankness and in that state you focus on the sigil thus charging it it gets down down deep 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 into the deep parts of you and then eventually reappears out there somewhere in your reality that's the idea the hyper sigil takes this to new extremes alan moore who is a very very close friend of grant morrison's those two men just love each other it's incredible to watch it online I am, of course, joking. They hate each other's guts, but, and I love them both. I wish they could find some sort of truce because I just love them both. And I, I'm not on either side. I love Grant Morrison. I love Alan Moore. And there we are. I've met one, haven't met the other, but we've got mutual friends. And um, yeah, just love it. You know, it I have no, no nothing to say about that. But Alan Moore makes the very wonderful observation that art and magic are synonymous, that art and magic are essentially the same thing. Uh, he is correct in this, in my opinion. Now, a hyper sigil is a work of art created by a magician for others to enjoy, but which contains within it a spell, an enchantment, a sigil for something that they want, that the artist wants to happen out there in the real world. And the best example of this is Grant Morrison's magnum opus, The Invisibles, a wonderful comic book series, a life-changing comic book series, but also a hyper sigil. You see, you see what Morrison did was they created a character in The Invisibles, King Mob, who was essentially them. They dressed as King Mob. They went to the clubs that King Mob went to. They lived the life of King Mob. And in one of the issues, King Mob is captured by the bad guys. It's still a comic book. It's still an adventure story. And uh, King Mob is captured and is tortured horrifically by the villains of the piece. And as part of this horrible sequence, he is made to believe he has a flesh-eating bacteria eating his face, that his lung has collapsed, that he's all kinds of messed up. But this actually happened to Morrison. The issue went out and Morrison did indeed get a staph infection in his face. His lung did collapse, I believe. They went through the ordeal that they put King Mob through. So while in hospital, they wrote the next issue. And in that issue, King Mob gets better really, really quick. You know, he's instantly healed, in fact. And sure enough, they got better in real life. And then they realised what was happening, that the, the comic book and their reality were very, very porous almost they were very you know there was a synergy there so they started putting stuff in the comic book that they wanted to happen in their actual life king mob suddenly got a very hot girlfriend and started making an awful lot of money you know started driving a sports car and sure enough these things happened to morrison they talk about this in the uh they used to talk about it every month the monthly issues when they came out had a wonderful sort of a correspondence section where morrison would talk to the readers and um, they would talk about this quite openly. There was a great one when um, the comic book was failing. So Morrison asked the readers to all charge a sigil to save it. And we all did. And the book was saved. The, 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 the readership went through the roof. Oh, the 90s were a wonderful time. So that's the story of uh, Morrison. And that's what a hyper sigil is. So to the comment that's inspired this video. 
on reality selection. A great comment, not a nasty one. And what I'm actually very grateful for. Well, it comes to me from uh, from Jerry K, one of the regular viewers of this channel. Hi, Jerry. Hope you're good. And thank you for your comment. This is what it is. Uh, great video. Thanks, Jerry. Love your manifestation stories and how organically a person's desires can enter their life. Thank you again, Jerry. But just a curious point regarding self-limiting beliefs or self-fulfilling mantras. In an earlier video of yours, the Michael Flatley Blackbird one, it's an episode of my podcast. I used to do it as a video show on here as well as an audio thing. You keep repeating over and over how you're aware of your strengths as an entertainer, but that's your crap at the business side of things. You repeat this mantra, if you will, over and over in different ways. He's not wrong. As a random internet stranger, can I point out that this repetition is precisely what Neville warned against. Neville Goddard was the guy I was talking about in the previous video where this comment appears. Go and have a look. You are great at the business side of the biz. You've just told yourself you aren't, and so your reality aligns with this belief. Just a thought. Keep up the great uh, content, mate. Hope you keep chatting about Neville and the law. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you very much for that comment, because it's really opened my eyes to something I wasn't aware of, and that is this. So, I'm a comedian in real life. That's how I make my living, and my stand-up persona has always been a loser, if you like. I mean, I've always found comedy in pointing out where I felt. All my comedic stories, I just suddenly realised this, all of them, I fail, which is funny to the to the, the viewer, the, to the audience. It's amusing, you know. Um, they're all stories about love that hasn't worked out. They're all stories about, you know, things going wrong, essentially, and, uh, and my exasperation at said occurrences. And then I suddenly put two in together. I can't believe I've not done this before. That that's a hyper sigil. I'm creating that reality. On st I'm literally living into. Them. I create these stories and live into them. And it wasn't until I saw Jerry's comment, the sort of penny finally dropped, which sounds ridiculous. The amount of work I've done, but it's true. I've been creating a negative hyper sigil. Because in these videos, I'm a work in progress. I don't want to come on here like and speak like Guru Swami big bollocks who knows all the answers. I don't. You know, I'm like you. I mean, I'm a, I'm a seeker. I'm a fellow seeker. I'm I'm looking. I'm searching still. And I have found some things. That's what I'm going to share on this uh, channel. A lot of things. I've got a lot of stuff to share. But I'm not. No one is finished. That never happens. And uh, that comment from Jerry has really changed things for me. I'm looking at all my stand-up now. All the things I'm creating. And I'm looking at them. And I'm thinking, these are hyper sigils. These are things I'm putting out there. It all comes from conditioning. It all comes from conditioning. It all comes from uh, a tr having beliefs fed to you when you're growing up. That you, while you're still, you know, Doug Stanhope's great expression, while you're still Santa Claus eligible, you get all these ideas shoved into your head and then you think that they're real. You think that the voice in the head is in fact who you actually are. That the voice telling you the negative story is who you are. Well, it isn't. Those stories were put in there by other people, people that weren't qualified to do it. And um, that voice is literally that negative voice, that doubting voice, that constantly having a go at you voice. That voice is the voice of the superego. That voice is the voice of the the imaginary parent, if you like. You, you, you attack yourself. You, you attack yourself. And then when you do that, things out there seem to attack you. Things out there seem to attack you as well to reinforce the belief that you have about yourself. I had it for years. I turned up to hang out with my mates when I was a younger man and I was always the clod. There was another guy that hung out with us and he could do no wrong. He was a genius. He was a legend. He came from money and he'd been raised to believe. Great guy. Great guy. Uh, very great guy. But he was raised to believe in himself. He was raised to believe that he was worthy and deserving. And subsequently, that's how he was treated. I was raised to believe the complete polar opposite. And that's exactly how I was cheated. I was the klutz. <sighs> but I was doing it. Not consciously, from conditioning. I was doing it. I was playing out these conditioned habits, these conditioned responses to circumstance that were put there in my my childhood in my formative years and then the work of uh, 
The search is the work to undo all that shit, to undo all that negative programming, to release yourself from it. And then to live life from a clear slate, to live life as it presents itself, to live life, to stop putting the past into the future and keep recreating it via the neural matrix of belief, but to clear that matrix, accept life as it comes at you and deal with it in the moment, spontaneously, from the place of clarity, from a place of self-possession, a place of self-belief. Which is why I love Neville so much. And I love an awful lot of other people too. And I will talk about them as well. But Neville inspired this comment that inspired this video that you're now watching. That you are creating by the way. Because that's what's literally what's happening right now. You're creating this as you watch it. But Neville's methods are a very clear, easy, practical way to release that conditioning. His ideas about the mental diet. His ideas about whether you buy into the... the uh, as I say, whether you buy into the metaphysics of it or not, his ideas work on the level of neurology. They're very practical. They work on the level of neurology. So if nothing else, if you're practicing them, your life will improve. But that was the last little bit. I didn't realise that I was doing that to myself. And Jerry is right. I have been. Watch the previous videos. I'm always having a go at myself. I probably will again. The conditioning is deep. I probably will again. And it is funny. It is, it, 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 it's it's a, fu a funny way to be on stage but I am going to have a very close look at it now moving forward and uh, see what happens this channel is now a hyper sigil this channel is now a hyper sigil I'm going to put this the things out that I want to put out I've never really spoken about these matters because of um, fear of what other people think you know, again, conditioning, fear of what other people think. And now, no, 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 because there are no other people. There's just this. You see, all these things ultimately lead back to the non-duality, to the, the non-dual, the Tao itself. This, this. We're all this. That's going to be a subject for another video. I'll go deeper on that. But this is just a quick one on the, the hyper sigil. Be careful what you say about yourself. Be careful what you say about yourself. And if you're an artist, if you're creating, create from truth. Create from what's actually happening. But at the same time, you know, don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. You don't have to. You can come from truth without hurting yourself. You can speak of the truth of heartbreak in a way that isn't setting yourself up for future pain, you know? Coming from truth is always the answer. And so it is. A, a short video thinking about the hyper sigil and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. More videos of this nature obviously will be coming, so please hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the notification bell as well and come with us. Let's, uh, let's live magnificently, my friends, moving forward. And a massive thank you to Jerry for that comment. And uh, I will see you on my next video.